Hello, so today we are going to look at contest uh, 168. The problem we are looking at right now is divide array in sets of k consecutive numbers. And the problem says that we get an array of integers, nums, and a positive integer k. And we want to find whether it's possible to divide this array into a sets of k consecutive numbers. And we want to return true if it's possible and false if not. So if we look at an example here, k equal to 4. So what we want is to check if the array can be divided into sets of four consecutive numbers. And so for here, we can have 1, 2, 3, 4. So four consecutive numbers. And then 3, 4, 5, 6, which is also four consecutive numbers. So we'd have two groups of them. So we can divide it, so we return true. For the second example, k equal to 3, so 3 consecutive numbers. So if we sort this here, we can do 1, 2, 3, um, 2, 3, 4, and then 3, 4, 5, and 9, 10, 11. So we can divide them into 4 groups of 3 consecutive numbers. For this one, there is no way to... Uh, this, so for k... For this example here, we can do 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. Um, for this example, there is no way to get um, three consecutive uh, numbers, groups of three consecutive numbers. Uh, one reason for that is we have only four elements, so there is no way, it's not a multiple of three even. Um, yeah, so that's the problem. Now let's see how we can solve this. Um, so how can we solve this problem? So one thing we can quickly realize if we look at the example here um, that we have, which is 1, 2, 3, 3, um, 4, 4, uh, 5, 6, and k equal to 4. This is the first example given. If we look at this, we can quickly see that, well, we could just take this, these consecutive ones, start from 1, and just look for 1 plus 1, which is 2, look for 2 plus 1, which is 3, so basically look for, so start from, from a number, from a sm small, s from the smallest number, right? From the smallest number. Um, and look basically for, um, for that number, let's call this number x. Look for x plus 1, x plus 2. Um, x plus k because what we are looking for essentially is k consecutive numbers so it makes sense to look for that and so here we will look for we are looking for the f four consecutive numbers so we have x equal to 1 so we look for for x plus 1 which is 2 x plus 2 which is 3 x plus 4 which is um, x plus 3 sorry which is this one. So here it's actually k minus 1. Right? Um, and then once we do that, one thing we need to do is also is look at, is go back to the duplicate here and take that one and then look for, uh, take that one as x. So first our x was this, uh, was 1, and now it's this 3. Look for x plus 1, so that's here, x plus 2 and x plus 3, right? So one thing you can notice here that is complicating things for us a little bit is um, duplicates. So duplicates complicate the problem for us because if we had, let's say, if we had something like just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, maybe six, seven, eight. It would be really easy, right? We could just go right here, and once we are done, we can start from here, right? But duplicates kind of makes it in a way that we don't, we can't like, we can do it consecutively this way. One thing also you notice in the problem, they didn't promise us that the array is sorted. And the way we are traversing here, looking for x plus one, x plus two, x plus k minus one, needs the array to be sorted. So what we need to do is um, basically step one, we will need to sort the array. Right? Okay, so now we kind of have a f an idea of what we need to do. Sort the array so that we can, the first one is the smallest one. Um, and 
and basically you can see here what we are doing is just no, we know that if we don't find any of these x's then we uh, any of x plus 1 x plus 2 until x plus k minus 1 that means there is a gap there is like there is a number that is not there is there are k numbers that are that have a gap kind of and so it, it doesn't work so we return false immediately um, now how can we handle it in a way that works with these duplicates here um, so one way we can do that is using just a counter which can be a hash map or in Python it can be collection that counter um, that keeps track um, of occurrences right because we have duplicates whenever we have duplicates we need to think about tracking the occurrences so that we can manipulate them here right and so what we can do for for example in the first example so if we look again at the example one which is one two three three four four five six and k was equal to four so if we construct our occurrences map which counts the number of occurrences what we would have is well for one we have two, three, four, these are the keys, are the numbers. And so we have one occurs once, two occurs once, three occurs two times, four two times, five one and six one. And so what we can do here to solve the problem once we have the count is we can, so we will sort the array first, right? And so that would mean first we will sort the array. So that we can apply our um, our logic here, and what we said is we want to have the counter for these. So we would have count, which is just collections. In Python, we could do it this way. You could also just have a map, and then just go through the numbers, and every time you encounter a number, increase its uh, value by one, right? And now I'm just going to do what I said here: traverse the array and look for these x plus 1 until x plus k minus 1, right? And so to do that, I'm just going to say for x in um, numbers, right? So here I would need to pass, um, because I want to count the occurrences of the numbers, so it's going to be something like this, right? So here, what I want is, I want to check if the number still exists, right? If, if it wasn't like used by something else, right? So because let's imagine that we had something like this. So if we have an example where we have, um, let's say, for example, if I had one, two, three, like this, and then had four, five, right? So I would consider first um, yeah, maybe four, five, six. Let's add six here. So first, I would consider these, right? And if I didn't have this count checking here, um, I would, I would, may maybe say that this is also a group, right? Because every time I consider something as a part of a group, you will see that later. I will decrement it from the count, right? So that's what I will be doing here. Is basically. I will keep track of the number of occurrences of numbers in this count here and every time I like go through um, a portion of the array and I check and find that it exists I will decrease its count so that I don't reconsider it again and end up with doing something like I, I just showed in the example and so with this um, now I know that I have the, I will need to go through the, um, the, this here, what I said, which is x plus 1, x plus 2. So to do that, I will just go through it like this in range of basically x until x plus k, which in Python would end at x plus k minus 1. And with this now, whenever I check a number that means that I, I used it or I verified it so it I consider it done and so to do that I will just 
subtract the number of its occurrences. I will show you why I'm doing it this way. Um, so occurrences of count view. So why am, am I subtracting occurrences? Why, why am I not subtracting just maybe the value one? So that's for because there is a case where let's say I have the example uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? And k equal to three, right? So for this one here, um, I could have done it like, um, I could have just subtracted one, right? But I can also just say, okay, this occurs two times. Let me just subtract it two times. And basically the second time when I come here, the count would be zero, right? And so it would not enter. And so that would make it basically be faster. But I could have also just subtracted one. And the second iteration, I will go through the inside the if flow, the if condition again, right? And inside the if uh, body again, right? And so that's just a small optimization there. Um, now, what happens if, let's say, I didn't have this three here, right? <coughs> then this should fail, right? And so how can I detect that? And the way I can detect that is basically when the count is less than the zero, that means that there is a number that should have existed for the consecutive group of k consecutive numbers to exist, but that number didn't ex wasn't found. And so I need to return false because that means that I can't construct what the problem is asking. And so I would need to check here if the count became less than zero, I should return false. And then at the end, I just return true. Right? And so this is the entire thing here. And so basically, this is a greedy approach to the problem. What I'm doing is sorting it first, and then I go through the numbers. I start from the smaller one each time, the smaller one of the ones of the numbers that are left. And I have a count map here that contains how much, how many items, how many um, numbers are remaining that haven't yet been constructed in a group. And every time I check, I, I start from that number and I look for its k consecutive numbers. And I subtract them; f uh, it's the, their occurrences from the count. And if I end up for any of them with va a value less than zero, that means there was one of the consecutive numbers that wasn't found. And so I return false because that means that I can't construct the um, the 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 group, right? And so that's that's how it how, how the solution can 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 be done. Um, and so. Just to reiterate the intuition for this is we looked at it, we said, okay, the problematic thing is just having the duplicate numbers. Um, without them, we would have had a sorted array and we could have just do just verify that there is a run, um, a, cons uh, a consecutive run of, um, of the K uh, numbers starting from one number using this X plus one, X plus two, X plus K minus one. And if at any point where I don't find any of them, I should return false. And just adding this count so that we can handle duplicates correctly. And that's pretty much it. Um, okay, so now um, if we look at the, just to look at the time complexity for this, um, you can see here that we are doing one for loop here. So this is O of N. And here we are doing one for loop O of K. And so, overall, this would be O of n k, right? And in terms of space complexity, we are using um, we are using this um, count uh, map here, and so space would be O of um, n uh, space. Okay, so now let's type this in lead code and make sure it passes the test cases. Um, okay, so I just typed the solution that we just saw in the overview 
and now let's see that it let's make sure that it passes so um, same thing as in the overview we have a count map and we go through the um, numbers sorted um, we could also just sort them beforehand so we could just do it this way both work fine um, and then we check if this num this number has not been considered yet and then we save the occurrences and we go because as much many times as the first one occurs all the consecutive numbers after it the k consecutive numbers after it have ha, have to occur the same number of time uh, this is the example that i mentioned which is one two three one two three one occurs two times and so its consecutive numbers two and three have to also occur two times and that's why we save it here we subtract it for each of the consecutive numbers and we check that that didn't make them less than zero because if we had the example let's say we had um let's say maybe we had one two three and then we had one three right so that means one occurs two times and so occurrence here would be two now for the number two when v equals to two um we will subtract by two but since two occurs only once we would have count v equal to minus one and this would be less than zero and it will return false right and so this example return false if we didn't do that it would not return false right and so that's why we are doing this and we check if it's less than zero return false otherwise um if we didn't find any way where it became less than zero that means all the consecutive um occurrences that we expect were found and so we just return true and so now let's run this and make sure it passes okay so that solution passes um yeah so that's it for this problem um thanks for watching and see you next time